If you're looking to experience the heart and soul of Vietnam, then you've come to the right place. Nestled on the banks of the Perfume River, it's a city that's steeped in history, culture, and timeless charm. Here, we'll take you to explore ornate pagodas, ancient tombs, and something a little out of the ordinary. From vibrant markets, delicious cuisine, to enjoying a little bit of r, &R you are sure to enjoy the captivating destination of Hue. We left Da Nang and I couldn't help but admire the moodiness of the sky that awaited us. And before we knew it, we were already crossing over the beautiful High Van Pass. It's a breathtaking mountainous pass that stretches approximately 21 kilometers and offers a panoramic view of the South China Sea on one side and lush forested mountains on the other. And in a blink of an eye, we were already at the halfway mark where we stopped for lunch. We're gonna be spending two days in Hue and we just stopped at the cutest little... We're on our... Hue to Hue, and we just stopped at this cute little restaurant, and we are in Lang Khao Bang, and it's just a little peninsula on the way there. We just drove the High Van Pass. It was really pretty, very green and mountainous, a lot of clouds. It's very overcasty today, a lot of low clouds in the mountains, which looks really cool. This area is very busy. I think all the tour buses stop in Lang Khao Bang. It's a halfway point to Hue, and um, we're seeing a lot of tourists just uh, sitting, having something to drink, and visiting around this little cute little area. We saw a lot of fishing boats too when we were driving into Lang Khao Bang. But it's overcast. When we got up this morning, looked at the forecast, it called for rain for the next few days. So it's just our luck. We do a road trip and it rains, but holding our fingers crossed because it hasn't rained yet. It's been overcast and nice. Hasn't been full on sun, so it hasn't been super hot, which is awesome. So we're just taking a little break and then we'll hop back on the bike. We're halfway. So as we are driving, there are fields and fields of these monuments. They are so intricate and they're so beautiful. Some are just plain cement and some are very, very colorful, but the details in them, and they're huge. This is something we've never seen before, but they're just beautiful. But just the detail is just amazing. That was the last stop we made before arriving at our accommodation. So we got checked in to the G Hotel. It had everything we needed and we were very happy to call it home for the next two days. We dropped our bags and we were looking forward to just exploring around. The streets were very quaint with colorful colonial buildings and delicious bakeries and coffee shops that dotted along the streets. There's colorful street art to admire and a plethora of eateries to choose from. After dinner, the rain came, so we ducked into a few of the cute shops that we saw offering handmade leather items in vintage styles. The colorful lanterns just added to the beauty, creating a unique and inviting atmosphere. Even the little alleyways had charm and character. We ended up taking a stroll along the Perfume River. It was nicely lit and had a beautiful lotus flower restaurant right on the water. At the end of the night, we found ourselves here at the Sosono Spa with these very kind ladies. Jay had a massage and I was treated to the famous Vietnamese hair wash and facial. Exactly what I needed for a good night's sleep.
Today we had a full day to explore. We couldn't resist driving through the Citadel walls. The Imperial City, also known as the Citadel, is a grand historical complex that served as a political, cultural, and religious center for the Nian Dynasty. Complete with this pretty impressive moat, the Imperial City contains palaces, temples, beautiful gardens all arranged in a symmetrical layout. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site that gives you a glimpse into Vietnam's royal past. Next, we headed off to the Tien Mau Pagoda. Established in 1601, it's Vietnam's tallest standing pagoda at seven stories tall. It's surrounded by beautifully landscaped lush gardens in ancient statues, including valuable relics and a historical bell. Gonna explore around and it goes forever. I just thought once you walked up to the pagoda, the first like little area was it. But I don't know. You just keep on going to the back. It's quite. It's actually it's, it's actually inhabited by uh, monks. They live here. Yeah. Take care of the ground. Wow, it's pretty amazing. I like how like rustic it looks. Okay, I think I've seen the prettiest flower I've ever seen in my whole entire life, and it's called a cannonball tree. And it grows these, looks like big coconuts, but they look like cannonballs. And they have this beautiful pink flower in the center of the flower. It's a yellow part. It looks like an anemone <laughs> folded into itself. It is so beautiful. Wow. We're in the park just across from the citadel and i gotta say the parks here in hue are beautiful the outside of the citadel is this beautiful park with lots of trees and it's just very nice and quiet it's back from the road so you don't really hear too too much road noise um, but there's pathways all woven all along inside the park looks very natural I like it. There are some areas where the grass is cut and others where it's not. But you can sit here, they have benches, you can sit, watch the boats go up and down the river. It's so very pretty. <laughs> The Guangxi Temple is something that we saw just as we were driving along, so we decided to stop. It's a Buddhist temple with traditional architecture, beautiful stone carvings, and this very grand entrance is what first piqued our interest in stopping here. We had the place to ourselves to explore. It was peaceful. Away from all the other tour groups in Bustling City, it's definitely worth stopping and taking a look around. So off we were, we hit the road in search of our next location, which is definitely not for everyone, but it spoke to my artistic side. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. So you can't come to Hue without visiting the old abandoned water park. <laughs> I don't know what it is about abandoned buildings that I love so much. I don't know if it's just like the mystery of it and like, I don't know. It's just the broken down graffiti. I love it. It's artsy and I don't know, I just think it looks cool. <laughs> so we are going to go check out this huge dragon that's supposed to be in the middle of a waterway, but it's um, summer right now, so there's no water. And I don't know if there typically normally is water here anymore. But um, And when we were driving up, we noticed all of this um, like racing tape. And I asked the security guard here, is there a running race here tomorrow, like a trail race or something? He's like, no, it's four by four. So they're having like tomorrow at 8 a.m. They're having a four x four race with vehicles around here. I just thought that was absolutely amazing. <laughs> I think that would be neat to see. So yeah, let's go check out this dragon. 
<laughs> so yeah, even though it's an old abandoned water park and a little on the eerie side, it's completely surrounded by beautiful lush forest, making it a very unique experience. This is so cool. It's very echoey, obviously. So much graffiti. I don't know how you get out. Apparently you can go up to the top. But let's see. Has a little bit of water in here from the rain. Because the windows are broken out of it. This is kind of cool. How cool is this? You get a pretty cool view. Wow. This is probably a pretty happening water park back in the day. How fun! You can see the whole water uh, park from up here. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. I love how like the earth is kind of taking back its. <laughs> Claim the jungle's claiming this land back. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. How oh, neat. We're gonna go over this bridge, see what we can see. It's cement, so it's not wooden. Oh, it's like, it was like a little lazy river. Huh. Yeesh. All the way around. Tuesday. Yeah, obviously it looks gross, but. <laughs> but how cool. So. The slides that we saw earlier are up there. And you go whew, in here. <laughs> it lives in there. Ooh, I don't know. The palm trees are beautiful. Like the landscape is pretty nice. I mean, obviously there's lots of weeds, but you can, yeah, you can see how it has the big palms and the, the short ones and the tall ones. A kids play a little area over there. Wow. Jay and I were talking and we still can't believe there's gonna be a four by four race here tomorrow. Like it is so peaceful here, like all the evergreens. You can smell the evergreen needles, hear the cicadas. It's very peaceful. <laughs> Before we end the video, we stopped off at Kai Ding Emperor. He's the 12th emperor. This has a real Balinese feel because it's all black, but it's a tomb where he's buried and worshipped here. And this tomb is huge. Wow. It's pretty amazing. The emperor ruled from 1916 to 1925, and it's a unique blend of both Eastern and Western cultures that feature elaborate decorations, intricate mosaics, and impressive stone sculptures. 
Inside the palace, you'll find a lavish throne with a life-size bronze statue of the emperor. It's one of the most decorated tombs I've ever seen. To say the grounds were impressive would be an understatement. It's a fascinating glimpse into the cultural fusion of Vietnam's last imperial dynasty. In our next video, we'll be taking you to Dung Ba. It's a well-known local market in Hue that just bursts at the seams. So hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next week.